I always have some nervous energy when I do these philosophy videos. Heck, any video when I'm in front of the camera. I like a tabletop companion to keep me company, to calm my nerves. Today it's going to be the MMP9 Shield. Yeah, Hall of Famer here in the Net and Fancy Project. What an awesome gun. It will be my fondling gun, safety checked of course. As we talk about jobs, that's right. I try to serve my audience with quality information of all types and I feel compelled to make this video. We'll just throw it in the Nut and Fancy Life Philosophy playlist. If you don't know where that is, check it out on my main channel page. All the stuff I've talked about, lessons of my father, life perspective stuff is in there. This video is going to go in there as well. I've had this question through the years here in the Nut and Fancy Project and I seek to help the people asking it. The question goes something like this. Nothing fancy, I don't have a job. Can you help me? Now these people aren't asking me directly for employment. They're asking me for advice on how to secure employment. And my answer is yes. I feel like I can help you. If, big if, you have the guts to put into practice what I'm going to tell you because I'm going to shoot straight with you. Are you up for it? Are you ready for the truth? Oh my gosh, here we go again. More truth from the Nut and Fancy Project, which you will find in few quarters anywhere else. You just won't. Well, I shouldn't say that. There's a lot of good books on the subject. But in video form, I didn't really look. I just don't know if you're going to find all this stuff. Let me tell you a story, and this is what really started actually Tactical Doodle and myself thinking about this uh, predicament that a lot of you, or at least some of you, find yourself in. We're at a meet and greet, and I forget which one, and a TMP comes up to us, really nice guy. We start talking tactical carbines. He's like, hey dude, you know, what do you think about this AR-15, this AK? You know, my price range is $1,000, you know, but I might have to go for something cheaper because I'm not employed yet. Anyways, I got to buy this tack vest, that tack vest, and I was like, whoa. Step back, what'd you say about the employment thing? He goes, yeah, I'm not employed, I don't have a job now. <laughs> and I'm going, dude, you're talking about a, you know, buying a thousand dollar gun and you don't have money coming in. I was like, are you married? He's like, yes. Do you have a kid? He's like, yes. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, we gotta talk about priorities. And that started me thinking about this video. Let's go back to his situation. So I'm not going to fault the guy for thinking, hey, I want to have, you know, raw armament, a way to defend my family. All that's good. But in the hierarchy of life under rule of law, where we find ourselves in, because you're watching this video on the internet, that means rule of law is working. That should be a lower priority than the necessities of life. Now, I'm a retired Air Force pilot. I have thousands of hours of flying all types of aircraft, including, uh, you know, at least in some fighter aircraft. My dad was in fighter aircraft his entire career. So I know the tactical air command, you know, uh, air combat command world. And in that world, they have something called PK, probability of kill. And I always remembered we went on a, a CAS mission, close air support mission, one time in... Uh, what was it? It was just a T-38, the attack version back when they're using I still think they use them for that. Just training mission. And I sat through the brief and the dude giving the briefing, he was fighter lead. They're leading, I think, a four ship to do this attack mission, simulated again, training. It was down in New Mexico. He goes, remember, PK of a ground hit is one. I hope I'm saying this right. In other words, the probability of you killing yourself, PK, because you're not paying attention and you fly your jet into the ground is 100%. You're dead. If you screw up doing 500 knots near the ground, it could be an F-16 CJ, it could be a T-38, it could be an A-10. There's A-10 pilots that have fixated. They're trying to see what their, you know, their Maverick did, what their gun run results were. They're looking, looking, looking. They're not clearing. They're pulling, pulling, pulling. Next thing you know, they get disoriented. Boom, into a hill. They're dead. I'm going to use this example to talk about this dude's situation and perhaps your situation. The probability of kill, i.e. you not meeting the necessities of life, 
food, shelter, clothing, when you're not employed, are probably one. Maybe not one. And when I say one, I'm meaning 100%. Because there are opportunities for you to get on assistance. Maybe it's deserved. In some situations, maybe it's not. I won't even go into that. But let's just say you don't have assistance and you don't have a job. How are you going to meet the necessities of life? Forget about weaponry. Forget about body armor. Forget about clothes. You need to make bills, dude. You need to feed your family. That is obligation number one. If you've chosen to get married, if you've chosen to bring a child into this world, you have to take care of said child. Absolutely. If you never have enough money to buy a gun, whatever. I'll talk about that, of how you get enough money, but your job is to start bringing money, money in immediately so you can live. Get your priorities right. You know, as a man, and heck, for that matter, as a woman in some situations, in many situations, like single moms, you have to have employment. So nothing fancy, I don't have a job, can you help me? Yes, I can. Let's talk about you, honestly, right now. Because in order to, for us to get you on the right path, we have to see what type of individual you are and why you are where you are right now. Why do you not have a job right now? Let's say dude is 35 years old and he finds himself unemployed. Well, there could be some very good and valid reasons for this. For instance, he was laid off. His business closed. He had a health problem. He was incapacitated. These things happen. Completely out of dude's control, he's unemployed. What kind of worker were you, were you when you were employed? Put yourself, in, and the reason I'm attacking this very forthrightly is because I want to get you a job. And so we got to get under the hood. And if there's something that needs to be corrected with you personally, i.e. attitude, work ethic, we need to address that and we need to fix it so you can stay employed and get better employment. You dig? If I'm an employ employer, let's say, heck, let's say the Smith & Wesson factory. Okay, and I have people there putting together these guns. I have engineers. I have line workers. Sales on the shield and all, let's just say the shield will keep it a micro example. They plummet 80%. I no longer need that manufacturing capacity. In fact, I cannot maintain it. If I do, I'll go out of business. I have to lay people off. Question, who are you going to lay off? Are you going to lay off your most in, important and experienced people? No, I'm not. I'm going to keep them because when sales do pick up, I need them to make me money. After all, that's what Smith & Wesson is in business for. They're not there to, you know, arm you up. Well, kind of, but they're there to make money and, you know, bless them for that because entities making money is what makes this capitalist thing work. It's what employs people. It's what gives us awesome stuff like this. Now, I know what you're thinking. You may say, well, I got politically screwed. You know, this guy had no business staying on when I got laid off. He, I got fired. He didn't. That does go on. There is some injustice out there. I realize that. But generally speaking, the most important, valuable, and productive employees are not laid off. They're going to be kept. I told you I was going to speak honest. So you lost your job. And I'm just, just one micro example. Why did you lose your job? Were you productive? Were you honest in your work? Did you work hard? Were you innovative? What do you mean by innovative? I mean, were you in tune with the business you were in? In other words, if I worked for a widget factory, if I'm an intuitive employee, I would say, what are the problems of this widget factory? How can I make widgets better? How can I make them more efficiently? And how can I make more money for us? Now, again, I don't want to go into the politics of each business. They're always there. So I'm aware of that. I've been there myself all the time. In other words, I know that there's injustices in this business, that people who get promoted that shouldn't be promoted. On and on we can go. But we can't go through life making excuses, and that's what we're attacking in this video. You can't go, well, I'm unemployed because Joe screwed me over, and freaking Joe, I hate that guy. That's not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to get food on your table. It's not going to get ammunition in your AR-15 magazines. You're going to be freaking 
you know, losing out in life because you're blaming your failures on someone else. You cannot do that. You need to look very hard at this person. Let those guys play their game, whether it's right or wrong, politically right or wrong. You can't influence that. You'll never change it. All you can do is be the best employee you possibly can do or can be. And I will guarantee you, if you do that, you're going to find employment. Why? And I attacked some of this in a previous that fancy video, and I called that workers are few. Remember that philosophy video? Some of these concepts are in play in this video again. Because you're valuable to your employer. You know, my youngest son right now, last suspect, works at a grocery store. And at that grocery store, he does a lot of stuff that really, really sucks. And as his father, I am so happy. What does he do? Well, he cleans up crap in bathrooms. Fecal matter. People crapping outside the toilet, on the walls, vomit, clog toilets every day, vomit on the aisles. He pulls in carts, he cleans this, he's bleaching that, he's working hard in the car, you know, recycling cardboard. He's working his butt off. And as his dad, again, I'm just like, oh, thank you, what a great job. Because his eyes are opened, and the lessons I've been tried to impart him as his father are really ringing true as he turns to his left and he sees his fellow employees not working hard. Yeah, I can't clean that bathroom. You know, I got to do this. And they make some excuse and off they skip. Meanwhile, my son is down there on hand and knee cleaning up shit. Why? Because as his dad, I've equipped him with that, not specifically for that job, but you get the picture that don't be above any task. And this is the first point I'm going to make as we try to get you a job. I may come back, circle back around and talk about attitude because it's going to be overreaching and woven through all these points that I'm making about how you as an employee or a potential employee have to have a very positive mental attitude. And it's going to start right there, right here is be open to all jobs. So let's go back to dude, 35 years old, unemployed, wife, kid, no money coming in. I will ask him, why aren't you working? Well, I don't want to work at Wendy's. I don't want to work at McDonald's. Well, I understand that. I wouldn't want to do it either. But what if that if that's the only thing I can get? I'm working at McDonald's. Don't feel superior that like, you know, I'm a super awesome dude and I need this job. Now, if you are educated and you have a skill set and you're trying to find employment in that skill set, that's a different situation. But if you generally are what the workforce call, calls unskilled, in other words, you can learn the job OJT, on the job training, or anybody can do it, then you're in a very large workforce, right? There's a lot of people that can do your job. They don't need special education. They can learn at OJT. For instance, my son, he's a bag boy at the supermarket. That's OJT. You know, he's a kid in high school. Anybody can do that job. They have to be willing to do that job, but they can do it. So let's assume worst case and that you, you don't have a skill that's marketable, a valuable skill. That is really worst case because chances are you do have one. You do, may not know it, but you do. And I hope to address that. Let me make a note to myself. Skills with a Z. <laughs> Spelling's a good talent to have. <laughs> Kidding. Be open to all jobs. Don't be above anything. Get money coming in, even if, even if it's just a little bit of money. Here's your problem with Obama and the approach of the Democrats often is they make it more lucrative to stay on welfare than to go get one of these jobs, and that is a problem. Perhaps you find yourself in this situation that you have a welfare check coming in, you're unemployed, and you look and you crunch numbers and you go, well, if I worked at this place, I'd get this much money. And yet if I don't work at it and I do this and I do that, I get disability check, I get that. And I make more money doing that. Here's my advice is you'll be more of a man. You'll be happier in life. And I'm assuming that you're healthy enough to work. Okay. The big caveat, you'll be more of a man. You'll be happier with yourself. You have a sense of integrity, a sense of pride in yourself. If you become independent and shed that crap, more truth. Get off that welfare. Get off the state assistance. Get off the federal assistance as fast as you can, even if you're poor. Here's another thing. If you stay on it, you will never achieve financial greatness, ever. So if you're dreaming about your AR-15, your 
you know, shield, M&P 9 shield, whatever, cool knife. More disposable income so you can have more preparations. Good luck. Because I don't think you're going to get rich doing that stuff. I don't think. I know. You got to make it happen. Be open to all jobs. It might not, not might, it won't be something you're totally stoked with. But cut through the prejudice that you have about those jobs. Well, I don't want to be a garbage man. I'd be a garbage man in, a, in two seconds. By the way, that's a good job from what I know. <laughs> good benefits, I get paid well, no one messes with them. Yeah, I'll take it. Don't think that you're above a job. Take whatever is available. And then, this is the flip side of that. It's not just that. I don't want you to just take a minimum wage job and stay there forever. I want you to get money coming in and then plan for your next assault to leapfrog to a better job. Now, remember that video I, I put together? I called it Live to Impress Yourself. Nobody knows you like you, right? Your mom doesn't know you like you. Well, maybe she does, but your wife, your girlfriend, you know you. The way you think about yourself is extremely important. I told you we're going to circle back to attitude, and this is part of it. How do you perceive yourself? I want you to perceive yourself accurately in order to get a good job. Don't be delusional. For instance, have you ever met someone who feels like that they, they're like all pissed off? They're like, I ain't working that job. I mean, I should be like, you know, get paid $15 an hour. I'm like, well, you don't have a skill set. So I'm awesome, you know, and they're delusional. They don't realize they're an unskilled worker in a very large unskilled workforce. Other people like them, probably better than them with a better work ethic, honest, willing to go into that bathroom and clean up the fecal. <laughs> That's what we're talking about, you know, figuratively. Don't be delusional. Be accurate. In that process, identify what skill sets you have. Maybe you've come out of the military. Maybe you're a military you know, security officer. That could be translated into law enforcement. You could be a local policeman. You'll have to go through post-training. That costs money and it takes a lot of effort. Welcome to getting a good career. You know, in this society, so many people think that they're owed everything for nothing. Well, I should think I should earn, you know, $200,000 a year. What have you done to earn it? Nothing, but I'm awesome. No, you're not. You're not awesome. How are you doing a contribution to your employer? You have to make yourself valuable, which usually requires training and experience. Getting back to your, the way you think of yourself. In a quiet moment, analyze what your strengths are. Play to your strengths. Be honest about your weaknesses. Try to solve those weaknesses. I'm never on time. Well, be on time. Uh, I'm not honest. Well, be honest. You know, I make people laugh. That's a plus. People like talking to me. That's a skill. Well, how so? Nothing fancy. Well, because, for instance, my sister-in-law is a hairdresser, does nails too, and she makes a ton of money. Did you know that? I don't even know if I've talked about her before ton of money, but she is extremely sociable. She is one of the nicest person, you know, nicest people I've ever met. And everybody loves her. Is she the best hairdresser in the world? Maybe, probably not. But people love talking to her. They love her friendship. That's a skill. It's worth money. Literally worth money because people will drive a long distance to come to her. That's a skill. So when you analyze yourself, be honest and write these down on a piece of paper. paper this is a bad part about me. I want to change these things. These are the good things. And see if you can dovetail those good things into employment. Right? And then plan it out. It's just like taking a hill in a battle. You just don't go charging off with one M1 Grand and leave everybody behind you. you got to have a game plan. How am I going to get there? That takes research. It takes work. So we talked about be open to all jobs. Get some money coming in. Don't be above even the what you perceive to be lowly jobs. And then while you're doing it, have a game plan to get a better job. Now, if we're going to take that hill off in the distance, we're going to have a game plan. And let's say, for instance, going back to the police officer example, a guy wants to be a police officer. You got to research. So you're working the night shift at McDonald's, whatever, at the supermarket, whatever. But in reality, you want to be a police officer. How do I do it? 
Well, you got to want it. How bad do you want it? Let me ask that again. How bad do you want it? And the reason I really drive that point home is because there's 10,000 guys that also want it and they may want it worse than you do and they're going to get it because your desire, your drive may not be intense enough. Well, I dream about it. When I close my eyes at night, I think of myself in that uniform driving my police officer car. Nothing fancy. I really, really want it. Okay, good. <clears throat> I'm glad to hear that because there's hope for you because you're going to have a lot of obstacles in your way. Here's one. You're working the job you don't want to have right now. Maybe you really hate it. Maybe they hate you. <laughs> I don't know. But again, you should have a positive mental attitude while you're at McDonald's or wherever, working very hard, being a great employee, and working to get a great recommendation from that employer. Because the time will come, you want to jump ship. You want that McDonald's manager to go, this is the best employee I've ever had. He was always on time. He never shirked any jobs. He was friendly with the customers. I love this guy. I'm really, really bummed to lose him. You are very lucky to get him. Remember what I talked about in Workers Are Few. You'll write your own ticket as a good worker. So if you've not been so great at, the, great at this in your past jobs, it's time to change and pretend and then become a great worker. And while you're working again, that crappy job that you don't want, it's a starter job, you're planning for your next job. And like I said, it's going to be difficult because you have a child at home, in this example, this arbitrary example, you have a wife, you have to make bills, you don't have a lot of money, it's tough. It's tough. You're gonna have to make some sacrifices. You know, there's gonna be no eating out, there's gonna be no luxuries. Any bill that you don't absolutely need, you need to cancel. Except internet. You gotta watch TMP. <laughs> you gotta have TMP. I don't care what you do, you have to watch this. This is gonna like make you money by watching this video, right? But if it's extraneous, like cable or something, dude, you got to pitch it. Live lean, live mean, and plan for the next one. You want to be a police officer? Find out about it. You have to research. Talk to other police officers. Make friends. Network. Social network. And work on that vision you have in your head of yourself. I'm going to be a police officer. If you're fat, lose weight. Get skinny. Get in shape. You want to be a police officer. You know, who would you hire? You know, you're making the decision. Are you going to hire some dude to come rolls to you? And you go, God, can that guy chase a perp? Or someone, that, you know, lean and mean. And by the way, you're going to have to pass post that is Police Officer Academy. And they're going to run you into the ground. You know, a lot of people go to post and they can't even pass. They're like, oh, I don't, I can't do this. No, you can do it. You just didn't want it enough. You can do it. There's a lot of people worse off than you and they're doing it. Have you ever been pulled over by a cop and you go, how did that guy ever become a cop? Or that girl ever become a cop? They seem like a total idiot. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? Well, they did it. So you can do it. And again, I'm just using a cop as an arbitrary example. But you're planning. And you're doing it smart. And you're writing down goals. For instance, a goal would be talk to five police officers about their job. And by the way, do this smart. You wouldn't do this while a cop's like on patrol or something. Hey, officer, can I talk to you? He's working. Go to the police station. Introduce yourself. Be dressed in a tie, a suit. That would be a good purchase. And say, hi, my name is such and such. I'm interested in becoming a police officer. Do you mind if I spend five minutes with you talking about the job? I'm very interested, but I want to make an intelligent choice about the occupation. What would you think if you're on there? Some guy approaches you that way. I'd go, this guy's squared away, man. Well, this is what I love about the job, and this is what I hate about the job. Which brings me to a minor point. Every job is going to have some suckiness to it. It just is. So don't think you're going to get your dream job and everything's like, oh man, life is good. There are some great jobs, and there's some jobs that are not so great, but every single job will have a downside. And you have to lay it all out. This is part of your research, and know what the pros and cons of, of every job are. Do your research. So that would be a goal I'd write. Talk to five police officers today. Go to the library. Research the department. What's their hiring been? How many police officers did they need in 2014, 2015, 2016? Because you may have to forecast of when you will be competitive for that job. What if they go, hey, we're not going to hire you with just military experience. And again, we're pretending this guy had some military SP security police experience. 
You need something else. We'll find out what that is and go get that experience. That might be your next job. Maybe you work, uh, you know, Wells Fargo truck, delivery truck. That's not my dream job, nothing fancy. I need my dream job. Well, you may have to do some stepping stones to get there. Again, how bad do you want it? You know, the world is full of mediocrity. Full of it. That's why a lot of people live the way they do. They don't aspire, dream the dream, and then put things together, the stepping stones to get there. You know, a lot of people through the years told me, uh, you know, when they find out I'm pilot, they go, oh, dude, I always wanted to fly. And I'm like, why didn't you? Well, because this, because that. But usually, honestly, it boils down they didn't want it bad enough because the amount of obstacles that I personally had to overcome to get the, the job I was blessed to have were substantial. Substantial. Not just, you know, the obvious, but other things. I mean, I was in T-37 training at Del Rio, which I affectionately called Hell Rio, Texas, doing T-37 spin training. And my ears went clear. I mean, we start to spin at 25,000 feet. This is where you take the aircraft and you just start rotating it and you put it in an uncontrolled way and then teach you how to pop the spin out and recover the aircraft. But meanwhile, you're plummeting out of the sky. You know, I forget exactly, but high block, I think it's like 25,000. You'd spin down 5,000 feet. The instructor pilot say, go ahead and recover the aircraft. You pop, you know, spinning left. <laughs> Well, hold on. Spinning left, rudder right, whatever it was, a spin bowl face. I know I should be better at this. You recover the aircraft, fly it out. But meanwhile, my ears went clear, so I had an ear blockage. I'm in total pain. I could hardly even hear the radios or what he's saying. And meanwhile, I'm flying this plane. And I'm praying. I was like, oh, Lord, please help me do this because I don't want to wash out. And I would get, after I landed, I'm in total pain. I had ble blood coming out of my ears, and I didn't say a word to this guy. I ain't telling him. Why? Because he'd go, oh, you need to go to the flight surgeon. And lo and behold, they go, you're disqualified. You're out. Obstacles is my point. Something you won't foresee. But I wanted it. I was like, I don't care how painful it's going to be. I don't care how late I have to study. I don't care how, you know, how tough it's going to be. I will do this. They will have to kick me out of here. Remember Officer and a Gentleman with Richard Gere. You look at him. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And again, we're talking about piloting, but it can be applied to anything remember when they're trying to make him wash it wash out he's like doing sit-ups and he's he's like pouring water on him's like you need to what do they call it sie self-initiated eliminate elimination or something he's like no sir i won't he didn't do it he stuck to it and that's what i want to instill in you is stick to itiveness because it's going to be difficult there's going to be lots of obstacles along this process to get the better job you need to get your foot in the door Let's get back to your attitude type of person you are. What kind of first impression do you make? Be honest about this. Let's say you have earrings. You have an earring. You have a tat on your, on your neck. You have a beard. When you approach a police officer and start asking about his, his job, and again, this is just an example, but let, heck, let's change it. Let's say you approach um, Google. Of course, Google would probably dig that. <laughs> Research your company. I mean, there might be certain situations where that will play. Maybe we should go back to the police officer thing. You come up to a cop. Maybe he's a shift supervisor. You say, hey, I want to talk to you about being a police officer. And you're wearing the air ring. You got this tattoo going here. You got a beard going on. What would you think of you? Be honest. Well, I wouldn't think anything. Come on, man. What do you think the department's policy is on that? I'll tell you what the cop's thinking. He's going to think, this guy looks like the perps I'm busting all the time. I'm being honest, man. I'm trying to help you. My point is, look sharp. Look presentable. Cut your hair. Shave. If you have a tat, hide it. You might be able to show it later on. But there are preconceived notions in our society about people who wear tattoos. You can get pissed as much as you want. You will not change that in a lot of occupations. Not all. It's just the way it is. You know, if you're going for a job, again, you do the research, the culture is such like that. I mean, freak, seals have tats, contractors do, whatever. But we're talking in general society for a white collar job paying more money, generally not be presentable. Make a very good first impression and be very careful about the details. In other words, how you look. There's books about this. 
I want to dress sharp, you know, I want to dress nicely. You don't necessarily have to wear a tie when you talk to these people, but have slacks, a shirt, look professional, look good. If you're heavy set, and I've been there myself, so I'm qualified to talk about it. Heck, I'm there now. I've just gained five pounds from like a sickness. Oh my gosh. Lose weight. Start working on your personal appearance. But I don't want to. Okay, then you don't want it enough. With a lot of jobs, not all. Pretend like you're the person seeing yourself for the first time. When you look in the mirror, don't look through your eyes. Look through their eyes. And I said pay attention to the details. You need to have a little notebook with you. And when you start social networking, or I shouldn't say social network, but when you start networking for this job, back to the PD example, take note of the names of who you talk to. I talked to Officer Dave Jones today. I write it in my net notebook. Pin, date, what did we talk about? Remember, why? Because you may run into another officer when you go back to the department later on and say, Hey, I came in last month. I talked to Officer Dave Jones, really nice guy. He helped me a lot. I was wondering, can you kind of give me some information about this job, about the department, when you're hiring, what are the qualifications, what are you guys looking for? This is my experience now, but I'm willing to do this and this and this to come to this job. Can you spend five minutes with me helping me? I really, really love this job. I love the department. I am stoked to work for you guys. It's pretty positive, right? How many people do that? Not many. You can do it at any job any job. You walk in, you start networking, and be prepared for rejection. It's just going to happen. You may run into that employee at the place you want to work at, and they look at you, and you make too good of an impression, and you're, they're, <coughs> excuse me, they're threatened by your appearance. So they go, well, this guy's way too put together. I don't want him working here. He'll make me look bad because I don't work that hard. Sound familiar? Blow past that. It's an obstacle, man. doesn't matter. Maybe you can't work at that place because there's a wall, there's you know politics going on, but don't be negative, be positive, be friendly with everybody, don't hold grudges, it will not serve your purposes. You know, remember every place and move on. Sooner or later you will achieve success. I guarantee it. You look sharp, you create a great first impression, and you're motivated, and you're doing everything in your power to improve your situation. Oh, by the way. Your work day is done because you got to start McDonald's at 8 o'clock tonight. <sighs> because while you're doing this, you're working that job you don't really want. But you have some money coming in. Some money coming in. You're able to eat. I guarantee you, if you do this, you will achieve success. I guarantee it. You need to get your foot in the door at the place you want to work, though. And that is getting to know people. And don't be a brown noser. Don't give them artificial praise. They'll see right through it. Hi, I really like this place. You know, I'm sucking up to them. I see right through it. I hate it when guys do that. I used to hire for our National Guard unit, and guys would brown nose me all the time. <clears throat> I'm a lieutenant colonel on the hiring board. I mean, I'm, it's not my whole decision, but I have an input and say, and the guys I liked who sat across from me, and I interviewed plenty, were guys that I'm describing. They're motivated. They're honest. They know about our guard unit. They know the mission we did with the KC-135. They know how long we're deploying. They've done their homework. They know what they're in for when they come to us and they have a good sense of humor and by the way i cannot over overestimate that having a great sense of humor don't say inappropriate jokes inappropriate jokes but some some fun is good because that person sitting across evaluating you and maybe it's just you networking they're asking themselves this question would i want to work with this guy Let's say you go into this place you want to work at and you make a great first impression. You take that person's name down. You note the date you talk to them. You get some good information, not complete information, but some information. That secretary that you talk to goes, goes after you leave and they go, I just met the coolest guy. He is really cool, sharp dressed, really friendly. And you, since you're dedicated to working at this place, you come back again. What do you think or her, you know, how she's going to greet you next time? Hey, I remember you. You're the guy, you know, that we kidded around with this, kidded around with that. And be honest, be genuine, but you can have fun. And then she may talk to the boss, put a bug in his ear, and then if and when you get that interview, who do you think is going to get the job? Well, maybe it's you, maybe it's not. <laughs> 
I don't want to build your expectations up because you may interview a lot and not get hired. Welcome to rejection. It's part of the process. It's normal. Expect it. Failure is part of the process in getting the job you want. Do not give up. Do not lose hope. Keep your dream alive. If you were to stop every time you failed, you know, you're just going to end up at McDonald's forever. Well, I don't mean to slam McDonald's either. I mean, there's people that work there. But to support a family on it, it's going to be very difficult. To increase your weapons inventory, it's going to be very difficult. You know, to go on trips and to live a higher lifestyle, it's just, you're just not going to be there. You got to qualify yourself for something more. Get your foot in the door. Be nice to people. Make a great first impression. And make, make getting a better job your job. Let's say you don't have a job at all. You don't even work at McDonald's. Every day you need to be on a schedule. 7.30, alarm goes off. <laughs> Get up, I shave, I put on my, my suit, my coat, whatever, and I go looking for a job. I'm building my resume, I'm working on a resume, I'm knocking doors, I'm networking, I'm taking notes, I'm doing my research at the library and on the internet about the place I wanna work, and I work till at least 5 p.m. It's a normal work day. But nothing fancy, I'm not getting paid. So what? So it's a job. And you do it five days a week. You don't dick around playing video games. You don't dick around, you know, hiking. You gotta get a job. You gotta get money coming in, dude. That's priority. Remember, the necessities of life. PK 100%. If you don't have money, you've lost. That's your job. And you do it. You cannot fail if you do this. If you're doing everything I'm, I'm hoping that you will do, I'm recommending in this video, you cannot fail. Assuming you're healthy enough to work. There's people who just can't for whatever reason. And it's sad. But if you're a healthy individual, man or woman, dream, dream big and go out and grab it. Oh, and by the way, I don't care what skin color you have. If you're black, it does not matter. If anything, that gives you an advantage <gasps> what? Listen, man, I'm just being honest with you guys. Being in the professional world, I'll tell you that right now. You know, if there's 10 applicants out there, you know, and one's black, one's whatever, race, in this world we have, they have the advantage. They will get hired. I'm talking from my own personal experience. The reason I'm telling you this is not to create some racial thing. I don't care about that. I don't care about skin color. I care about attitudes. But I want to instill hope in people who might run into this video and they go, well, I don't have a chance in the world because I'm a black dude or I'm of Me Mexican ancestry. It's a lie. You have as many opportunities as anybody else does. Qualify yourself. Be a quality individual. I guarantee you 99% of people look right past skin color. They don't care. Or sex for that matter. They want you to be qualified and a cool person to work with. They don't. So this whole talk about, oh, there's this racism thing going on. I just don't see it. And I was raised in Alabama, dudes. So I kind of had a lot of experience. I went to racially integrated schools. So don't preach to me about this or that. I've been there, done it, was raised that way. Most people don't care what color you are. They care about what type of person you are. Are you a good person? Are you fun to work with? Are you qualified? Will you save my butt if we go out on a patrol together? You'll get hired, man. You'll need victories, small victories to build, does another point, to build your self-confidence. A small victory could be that you filled that box that day in talking to five police officers. Remember, this is just a police, a guy wants a police job we're using, but let's say, whatever, a widget factory. Five workers at the widget factory. I come back that day, I worked from 7.30 till 5 p.m., lunch break in there. <clears throat> and then I come back and I mark that little box off. I talk to these people. It feels good. You achieved a goal. But that goal doesn't get me money. No, but it gets you where you're going. And where you're going is a better job. And there's a lot of small victories along the way. I put a little box. I want to go research this company. Find out when they're hiring next. I go back out to the library. I stay on the internet. If I don't have an internet connection, I research and I find out they're hiring 26 applicants in 2014. I come back. I mark that box off. Small victory. I am armed with knowledge. And that knowledge can translate into a job because you know how to maneuver yourself. When are they hiring? How many are they hiring? What exactly are they looking for? And this is very important. What makes a candidate 
competitive. You know, just wanting the job isn't enough. Having sat on a hiring board, I'll look at this guy's resume and, you know, we're looking for pilots at our National Guard unit once again, flying KC-135. This guy's a private pilot. He has a 3.9 GPA. He's friendly. He's sharp. He's maintained his flying. He knows this person in the unit, that person in the unit. He knows about it. He's local. He doesn't have to commute in you need to fly to Utah Air National Guard. That guy's competitive. As opposed to a guy comes in, he doesn't have his private private license. He's pulling a 2.7 GPA. He hasn't even finished college. Doesn't seem really motivated, but he acts like he is. Maybe not that competitive. Again, take an honest assessment of yourself for the job you want, your dream job, and ask yourself, what do I need to make myself competitive? And then go out and get those things. And it will be difficult, lots of obstacles. I think I've made that clear, right? But these small victories will lead to self-confidence. The schedule I'm advocating you keep leads to self-confidence. But I don't have a job. I know. But you're pretending like you do. And a funny thing happens when you, when you do this. When you pretend like you have a job, you're going to get a job. You get up at 7.30, you end work at 5. And lo and behold, you get in this routine. It's going to build self-confidence, self-esteem. You start interacting with these people. It's going to come through. They're going to feel that and they go, this guy's pretty squared away. We're going to hire him. And by the way, once again, I want to stress this. It doesn't matter what your work history was. You can always repair yourself, so to speak. Hey, I wasn't a great worker. You know, I did get fired for a good reason. It was my fault. Well, change. And be honest with your next employer about that. Don't try to hide it. Because they're going to find out. They'll call your employer. They'll go, hey, looking at this guy, you know, why, why isn't he working for you? Well, he stole from us. Oh, really? Well, that's an extreme example. Whatever. Let's say it's something more minor, but they let you go for a reason. They didn't care for you. Don't expect they're not going to find out about that. In most jobs, I think it's better to be extremely honest about it and forthcoming and humble. For instance, I'm sitting across from this person in the interview, and I, was, and I would say something like this. I'd go, listen, I am really wanting this job. I know that in the past I've made some mistakes. And I take full responsibility for those mistakes. I don't blame my past employer. He was a great guy. I was a little immature at the time. This was going on in my life. That was going on in my life. Since then, I've done this, this, and this to square myself away. I'm not perfect. And like everybody in life, I've made mistakes. But I have desire. And I have a drive. And I still think I could be an asset to this company. I know what you do here. And I want to be a part of your team. And this is how I can make a contribution. I will give you my word that I'll be one of the best employer, employees you'll ever have. You'll have no more problems with me. Or you'll have no problems at all with me. How would you feel if someone honestly engaged you like that as an interviewer? Exactly. You'll be touched. You'll go, this guy's straight up. He's not lying to me. He's not selling me some you know, con job. I'm going to give him a chance. It will work to your advantage. I guarantee it. None of this stuff I'm telling you is easy, is it? You know, when you clicked on this video, did you think I was going to tell you some magic way to get a job? No, oh, I'm telling you the way that works. But I know that works because I've used it multiple times myself. As taught to be, taught, can't speak. As taught to me by my own father. You know, go back and watch that. You know, lessons of my father, workers are few. And I tell you about how I got that job at Sundance, Utah. And how difficult that was as an 18-year-old. Work up. Have that dream in your head. And I was going to, I wrote this down to myself. If you have to get skills, get the skills. Maybe you want to be a courtroom stenographer. You're working at McDonald's. Again, that's an arbitrary example. Don't hold me to it. But you get the picture. And you want to be a court stenographer. You're going to have to go to school. Maybe it's night school. Maybe you're a single mom. And you're watching this video and you go, well, that's going to be tough. Yes, it's going to be tough. It is. But you can do it. And you have to believe in yourself when no one else will. There'll be other people that are jealous of your success. They want to pull you down. They want to discourage you in this process. They go, you know what? It's really not worth it. You just need to be grateful for what you got. Don't go up. Blow that stuff off. Just like Richard Gere, an officer and a gentleman. And achieve a dream that you have. Go to school. You know? 
How am I going to pay for it? Well, there might be ways to fund it. Might be a loan. You have to pay that back. Might be some educational programs out there that you can fund it. Might be, you know, your family loaning you money with a promise to pay back. Say, hey, I, I need to school. I find in my life experience that most people are happy to contribute to education for a loan. I mean, assuming they'll get paid back. Hey, I want to use this money to go to Vegas. Hey, I want to use this money to buy that cool AR-15. Can I get it, Uncle Fred? No. Hey, I want this money to go to Post Police Officer Academy because I'm applying in 2014. If I don't get it, I'm going to apply in 15. If I don't get it, I'm applying in 16, and I'm working my butt off to get there. All right. Money loaned. Get the picture. I got to wrap it up. Be honest in, the, in your self-assertion. Self-inventory, we'll call it. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Attack your weaknesses. We all have them, by the way. Everybody is weak in something. There's something annoying about that person. <laughs> Everybody's that way. But be honest. And you can solicit feedback from people who know you best and go, okay, give it to me straight. Why did I get fired? Or why am I not working? And you'll be amazed at the honest feedback you get from people that you know. They'll go, well, you really want it honest? It's like I do. All right, you're lazy. What? Don't get offended when you get honest feedback. You ask for it. And it's valuable to you. It's gold. Because they're telling you how other people perceive, perceive you. Well, what do you mean I'm lazy? Well, you're always late at your job. Your, your employer complained about it. You act like you didn't give a crap. You act like that, you know, they owed you. And on and on they'll go, giving you this honest feedback if you have a really good friend. Because good friends will do that. And then attack it. I'm not punctual. Boom, goes on my list sheet. I'm going to become punctual in my routine in getting a job. 0, 0730 to 1700 hours every day. I have a hard time talking to people. I'm shy. I'm introverted. Well, look for opportunities to talk. How am I going to do that? There's all kinds of ways, man. You're not employed or you're underemployed. Get it? McDonald's, you want something better? Find a way to talk in public. Maybe you, I don't know, read to people, a blind person or something at the local library and get these public places with, that need volunteers. Maybe you could go to a rest home and read to those people. And you're serving the community at the same time, getting experience talking in front of people. And little by little, your confidence will wax strong and you'll overcome that weakness. But it takes work. It takes you setting it as a goal and looking for opportunities and attacking it. Dream big. Sky's the limit. Doesn't matter what your skin color is. Doesn't matter. Pink, purple, black, yellow, red, white. The world needs quality people in all occupations. They are in demand. Everywhere. At McDonald's on up. All the way to police officers. They need quality people that are good at their jobs. To have the, the qualities that I've been discussing in this video. Set a goal and reach those goals, you can do it. If nobody else believes in you, I believe in you. Okay? You on the other end of this camera, no matter how miserable or unhappy your situation is now, you can change. No matter how little money you have, you can change. Well, I'm broke. I don't got a cent to my name. All I got is this public internet connection to watch your videos, nothing fancy. Well, lucky you, dude, because there's hope for you. You can do it. Don't be above jobs that you, I mean, don't have that entitlement attitude. Well, I'm, I'm awesome. I need a job that pays me $100,000 a year. And you don't have a skill set that's worth $100,000 a year, which is rampant in this society. They're delusional about what they're worth. If you want to be worth $100,000 a year, you have to deliver $100,000 of value to whatever company you're working for. That's just the way the economy works. You can't change it with a government program. You can't change it with political correctness. You can't change it with getting pissed off and having a bad attitude. It's just the way things work. You can make yourself worth $100,000 to that employee, employer. You're going to qualify yourself. You're going to research. You're going to develop those skill sets. You're going to network. You're going to keep a notebook of all these people. You're going to present a positive, awesome first impression. And then you're going to back it up with being honest and motivated. I wish you the best of luck.
We're watching, of course, a nothing fancy project, and it runs deep. Maybe you know that by now. It ain't just about guns, knives, and gear. It's about life. And I seek to serve humanity in some tiny, insignificant way. And this is another video in the line of doing just that. Best of luck, my friend. Best of luck. You'll do it. See ya.